Welcome to the Editor's Note Comics Podcast. I think that this world, it needs men that are willing to make the hard call. Central Maine's best comics podcast, by default. Ain't no thing like me, Seth Lee. Here are your hosts, Zach and Jared. Matt's coming. No. When do we start? Welcome back to the show, the show where we talk comics and movies and pop culture TV and a bunch of other crap. Wow, that's a wide ranging. I'm Zach and you're some son of a bitch. Okay, <laughs> time out. Time out. New listeners, man. Yeah, my name is not son of a bitch, first of all. Some I'm not bitch. just some. Okay, we got we got to compress I... it to some bitch. Some bitch. <sighs> no, you don't. You can just call me by my real name. <laughs> that's how you do it, Maine style. No, that's bitch. more Southern. <laughs> my name is Jared. Southern Maine. That's how they do it down in Sanford. Awful. Um, yeah, it's awful that you open the show welcoming new listeners by calling the co-host, the anchor, the main event, the heartbeat of this show, a real son of a bitch. But we got new recording foam. Yeah, I see that. That's we're very fo- nice. We're, yeah. we're foamed up. And you put it in like different directions. It's supposed to be. I like it. You you did your research. You did your homework. Yeah, I mean, this... you also look like you hot glued it because there's little stringy pieces all over. Or is that just hair? Uh, um, both. I hot glued it, and there's hair. Wow, where'd you get a hot glue gun? Oh, um, when I say hot glue, I actually mean super glue. Oh, sorry, I, I misspoke about my glue. Yeah, you lied to me about your <laughs> gluing habits and techniques. You didn't use just like the Elmer's glue stick. You use some like high quality stuff. No, I have super glue. I didn't have Elmer's. Is it knockoff super glue or is it like no, legit it was... crazy glue, gorilla it, glue? It was super. It was. Listen, just because it says, is it the kind of glue that... If, Look, it, it, I used multiple tubes on this because it turns out there ain't that much per tube, but I no, had a there's, pack... there's not. I had a pack of tubes. Is it the they give you the warning to not touch your fingers to each other or they'll be glued together forever? I mean, it tastes fine. I mean, good. <laughs> to each their own. That's the thing, though. Hopefully we sound better this week because we're... Zach eats paste. Eh. Well, glue, technically. That's where... The hell did you do? I was trying to adjust... You... You threw the headphones down. There, I couldn't hear very well with my hat and the headphones. Well, there you go. Now I can hear very well. <laughs> Fantastic. Hopefully we sound a hair better this week. This is the most professional we've been. Okay, let's it clarify. Upgrades. It upgrades all the this time. This is the most professional setup we've had as far as like overall general professionalism. Probably case in point. That was my stomach, not my farts. It sounded that, loud that enough That was a be... stomach. Wow. Good for you. I mean, there'll be a fart to follow up my stomach rumbling, but... Uh, so everything's just kind <laughs> you, of settling you, down. You pointed at me, you're like, case in point. I'm like... No, I maybe I was just pointing at you in general. I can't stop a stomach rumble. I can hopefully hold a fart, but you not got a, a haircut stomach recently. Rumble. Did you get a haircut recently? Or maybe you just... I mean, I trimmed it in the bathroom. Wow. So you just... When's the last time you got a, like a real haircut? Like you went out and got your haircut by somebody else? Uh, there was a wedding in the summer. But you just shaved your head for that? No, no. I had a haircut in the summer. So did you just like put some clippers on and just run it at the same length all over your head? Yeah, it's number seven. Number seven. Wow. And my beard's a number five. What of it? <laughs> There's. You know what I'm going to do? I should, because I didn't really get you anything for your birthday. I'm going to buy you a haircut, like a real haircut. Or my wedding. I was in your wedding. It still didn't get me anything. I bought a suit. <laughs> still didn't get me anything. I was there. Everyone else did. Not everyone else did. Oh, yeah, they did. Mike said he didn't get you anything. Just because he didn't know about it doesn't mean that his wife didn't. Oh, well, Mike didn't get anything. <laughs> uh, I guess... I give you 52 <laughs> hours a year in podcast servitude. I don't know what we're going to do in December. Well, that's because, a long, thank God it's it's February. We have some well, time to figure this out. Because I am I have shows basically planned through August, but December, like our normal recording day, falls on Christmas Eve and New Year's Eve this year. So it's like, ah, uh, we got to figure that out. Well, we're, that's a ways off. We have nine months. We could just date <laughs> well, a baby in that time. <laughs> we'll get we could there, create life between now and that problem. <laughs> I guess from there, we'll go into the news. That's a thing we do. Before we get started, does anyone want to get out? It's time for the news. Huge jacked man himself. Oh, yes. And Patrick Stewart. What, are they going to give us more? No, they're in the Guinness Book of World Records. Really? For being the longest superhero actors. Really? I thought they were going to be in the Guinness Book of World Records for being major league badasses. I mean, they could be, but they're in there for longest superhero performance. Wow. Because they went in there in the year 2000 with X-Men 1 and then going to 2017, 2016 wow, with that's Logan. A long, that's a long time. Yeah. 
I'd argue Adam West did it longer because he came back to do some animated stuff. Yeah, but he had a big hiatus. But he also did Super Friends, and then he did some uh, two animated movies. I'd argue Adam West has the longest run, but whatever. Hugh Jackman and Patrick Stewart are in there. And also uh, Burt Ward, I guess, because he was there too. Yeah, he was also involved. Well, wouldn't um, Robert Downey Jr. be closing in on that? When was Iron Man? 2008, so he's only been in 11. Oh, okay. Patrick Stewart and Hugh Jackman got... Uh, 17 years? 16 wow. or 17. Wow, okay. Well, so they're in the Guinness Book of World Records officially. Good for them. That's a thing. What else we got? Ghostbusters. My God. <laughs> That's had a week. Yes. Jason Reitman, son of Ivan Reitman, the director of the first Ghostbusters. He is Vigo. Look, Vigo ain't great. <laughs> Ghostbusters 2. You would like the buzzing a, of flies to him. <laughs> it's not a great movie. No, come it's on. entertaining enough. It's I, not bad. I don't mind it. Not at all. I mean... The harbor in New York is not deep enough for the Statue of Liberty to walk across and have her shoulders and head above water, but I mean, maybe it, she's like treading water. It is if you have a Nintendo, whatever that controller was called. The badass one? I used, I had um, a Max, which was like you could press a button and it was like a turbo button that would just basically hold on like the A button. So it would just like if you had an attack, it would just do it automatically. Yeah. I forgot that one. Uh, that was the big square one, though. I don't know what that was called. I didn't own one oh, of those. Okay, yeah, well. I had an NES Max, though. Fun facts. I never had a Nintendo. Fun facts about my Max. I only had a, I had a Game Boy. We'll get to a Game Boy game. We're not there yet. Is it news about a Game Boy game? Pokemon. I thought we were going to talk about the um, about Link's Awakening. They've they've totally reimaged it for Nintendo Switch. Yeah, that's in awesome. In 3D, it looks badass. No, over here. It's like, but it's like 110 percent accurate. Like if you ever wished to know what that world would look like in 3D, they've done that a couple times. Though they did that with Ocarina of Time. They did that with Majora's Mask. They've already done that with the 3DS. Like this isn't new. It's fun that they're reimagining these things, and they just yeah. Ocarina res- of Time was in a three dimensional world with the Nintendo 64. Yeah, but they still updated it. They just did the same thing with Resident Evil 2. Like yeah, but this, this is different because this is this was a top down game, and now it's 3D. And I want it. Okay, great. I but do it also too. means I'd have to buy a Nintendo Switch, which I don't know if I necessarily want a Nintendo Switch. I used to have a 3 I really want a 3DS again. That's neither here nor there, but whatever. Ghostbusters. Jason Reitman said he is going to give Ghostbusters back to the fans. And oh, the internet being awful just yelled at him like, oh, the fans that said that it shouldn't be a female-led Ghostbusters and you're discrediting that and blah, blah, blah. You hate women. Blah. He is Vigo. <laughs> the guy from Ally McBeal, yeah. Was that who that was? Yeah, he was from Ally McBeal. I never really got into Ally McBeal. So. Downey Jr. was in there until he got fired for all the drugs. He is Vigo. <laughs> he is high on cocaine. Now is the season of discontent. I think, was that the one that, like, the flashback of, like, Ally McBeal, like, sniffing his butt? Was that that one? I... She sniffed a butt, like a younger version of her sniffed a butt. I don't remember. I mean, you haven't. I've sniffed a butt. Like a cigarette butt. <laughs> I'm sorry. I did just pantomime smoking as well. Let it be known. You've never smoked a cigarette. Actually, yes, I have. Have you? I have. Oh, fancy. <laughs> it's not really. <laughs> I didn't know that. I learned a thing today. No, I've smoked cigarettes. Yeah. You smoked a cigarette? You had a butt? I've had multiple butts. I've bought packs of the cigarette Were before. you a Marvel man? No, I was a, a camel guy. <laughs> Camel Crush, menthol, baby. <laughs> you say that like it was a common thing for you. Well, I mean, there were times when I would uh, be engaging in social imbibing of fluid and... A fluid? Alcohol. Okay, weird word to use. Yeah, now that I really think about it. No, there'd be times where uh, where I would be drinking a lot. and uh, <laughs> So you were at Sunday River? Actually, never at Sunday River, no. I um, Cigars up there, but... No, I cigar fluid. I couldn't. I don't know if I could smoke cigar cigarettes anymore. Ugh. But no, I have. Okay, there you go. Hardcore. Where were we at? Oh, exposing all my deepest, darkest <laughs> secrets. It's not that dark. My of a secret. My vices. It's not a vice if you don't actually have, do uh, it or are addicted to it. It's true. I. I mean, I've done it, but I'm not addicted to it, and I. So not a vice. No. Whatever. Jason Reitman said he's giving it back to the fans, and the internet was like. Bleh. And then he had to apologize for that statement. But I would like to come out in his defense. Yeah. Ghostbusters 3. I didn't watch the 2016 remake with all the like the SNL people. Not because I don't like them, because I think the majority of them are funny. And I even knew some people that were involved in the production. Because you couldn't handle the hotness of uh, Hemsworth in that? Supposedly he was good in it. But for me, Ghostbusters 3, 
and I mean, I love the original Ghostbusters. It's like right up there for me, but I wouldn't like, it's not a continuity that I necessarily follow like deeply. Uh, there was the 2008 game. That's great. That like Ackroyd and Ramus wrote, go check that out. If it's on uh, Xbox 360 and PS3. I think it's on the Wii as well, but you know, skip that one. But for me, Ghostbusters 3 is the most hot and cold movie of my lifetime because it was on, then it was off, then it was on, then it was off, and Murray was going to do it, then he wasn't going to do it, and then he was only going to do it if Her- um, no, Ernie Hudson got equal screen time, then he was only going to do it if, if he died. If he died in the first reel, and it was so off and on for so long that when it became a reboot, I was like, I don't, I can't even care anymore because it's been so like hot and cold and off and on and all this other crap. And now that it's back, like Jason Reitman saying, we're going to give it back to the fans. I take it as, oh, it's going to be that Ghostbusters 3 you were promised for 20 years that never quite happened. So that's how I read it. But other people read it as, no, it's all the people that were like, women Ghostbusters. I can't imagine that. You know what I'd like to try? And I don't, I don't think I could do it. Is I'd like to go a week without social media and just see how much nicer I feel about life. I could do that with no problem. I know you could. Because <laughs> I barely use social media. I do it for the store on a personal level, basically non-existent. That's fair. But yeah, so I, I don't know. what do you, Jason Wright be giving it back to the fans. Do you think he's giving it back to all the terrible people? Uh, do you think he'd come out and say, I'm here to support the awfulness? No. Yeah, probably not. What? Shut up, the internet. I feel like this is a weekly occurrence. I think you could just save yourself time by not letting these things upset you. Yeah, it's just one of those, I think people misread it, and I think people like to get angry over nothing. And you just did. You just got angry over nothing. I didn't get angry about you it. You totally got angry. I. You got irritated. I gave my perspective on a statement. In an irritated fashion. But I wasn't mad at it. I you think... told it to shut up. I said shut up the internet, don't shut up Jason Reitman. No, you told the internet to shut up, so you're mad at the internet. My reaction to everything is shut up the internet. I think social media is stupid. Wow, so everything is shut up the internet. Yeah, I hate okay. that I have to do social media for the store. I think everything is stupid. I hate the internet. Fair. By the way, did you see I this? I think n- nerds and losers use Facebook and Twitter. So on Twitter, did you see this <laughs> did you see this picture from Sugarloaf? No. The communications tower at the top with the winds yesterday? Groat. Oh, boy. <laughs> Just a little, a little <laughs> twisted. Not great. No. Uh, what else we got? The Twilight Zone had a trailer. The new Jordan Peele presented one that's going to be on CBS All Access. Side note, do you want to go Dutch on an account? I was waiting for you to ask. I figured at some point you would. <laughs> Let's go Dutch. How much is it a month? I don't know, but if we split it, not bad. Can we expense it to the store? No. Uh, why not? It's a tax write-off. I don't want to get in trouble with the IRS. You won't get in trouble with the IRS. Stop trying to... <laughs> the IRS won't be like, oh, this man, this man is clearly cheating on his taxes because he got CBS All Access. Stop trying to bogart the store's money. I'm not bogarting anything. You want to split this? Sure. All right, let's do that. All right, once we find out how much it is. <laughs> it's probably be like seven bucks a month. Oh, wow. <laughs> or something a real cheap. cheap. date. There, that's my wedding gift to you. <laughs> Half a subscription to CBS All Access. Because, well, I mean, I want to start getting it. I think it's next month the Twilight Zone comes out. But that trailer, man, I. what's weird is, like, I don't watch Black Mirror. I watched the first episode of Black Mirror where, like, the Prime Minister of England has to f*** a pig on live television. We talked about this before, and I said it was wildly uncomfortable subject matter for the show. <laughs> I mean... Yes, he did, well, and the, we move I on mean, from it, yeah. And it also happened in real life, but... But we move on from it. Not in live TV, though, but I, I'm i just so sold on the Twilight Zone. There were some good callbacks in there. Yeah, we have the body of the uh, creature from, what was it, like, Terror at 100,000 feet or 10,000 feet 10, or 20,000. Yeah, but it was like a stuffed animal. It wasn't the actual body. It was like a smaller version. No, I think it was the... The like, full body? The full, like, it was the head of it. Yeah, it was from, the head of it, There yeah. was a Shatner episode that... Because he was in two. He was in one in a diner, and he was in the like terror X number of feet. Yeah. It, it was, was like directed a, by Richard Donner, which is a short story that I only learned recently. I didn't know that. An animal on the, it was like a creature on the side of the airplane. Trying it was to, a gremlin. Yeah, yeah, a gremlin. Did you, did you know that was a short story? I only learned that recently. No, but I wouldn't be surprised if a lot of those... I don't think a lot of them were. Just I'm reading a book that Friday Flight was edited by Stephen King, and that was one of the stories in there. I was like, ah, it's all plane related short stories yeah but yeah so i mean they show that like washing up adam scott's in there there's a bunch of celebrities in that run yes i can't i i don't know I love the little the twi- devil's head yeah i love the twilight zone 
Yeah, you've always had an affinity for the weird and the macabre. It's a great, I mean, the original's one of the best shows of all time. Like, that's... The production value for it, the stories, the ability. Like, I'll put that in, like, top five TV shows of all time, like, hands down. The, the I, thing I about, love like, the Twilight Zone. The thing about the Twilight Zone back then and, like, watching it now is, like, the thing that makes it so disturbing and off-putting is, like the way that they had to do some of like the special effects and the makeup like it just is like yeah some of the makeup falls short there's no question yeah but it's, a it episodes. adds it adds to it i think like the off-putting and like like the uh the people from the planet that uh in to serve man they kind of had like the big it's the, a cookbook it's a cookbook and there were only like three or four people who were writing on that show and they were just rotating it was, it's such a i can't wait i can't wait to see i know we've discussed this before but there's several several really good story like your your favorite was terror at Ten Thousand feet wasn't it? or no it was uh um, all the time in the world right that's a great one i mean anytime burgess meredith was in there was really uh, i can't remember the name of the one where he was the devil that was season four when they got like the budget reduced and basically all season four was shit, but there was one where burgess meredith was the devil and he had a cigar but maybe he wasn't the devil but he definitely was I like the one where they're at the diner and the bus goes off the road and the guy's like, uh, we're here to colonize. And the guy's like, oh, it's a fine planet to colonize. We've already been here and your planet is under attack right now. Whatever. Twilight when the, Zone. When the, uh, the, the, uh, the guy behind the yeah, counter. with the three with the eyes. third eye. Yeah. Yeah. And the other guy had three arms to light his cigarette. What a great Which was a camel. <laughs> you used to smoke those. <laughs> Not habitually, just on occasion. You do what you can to impress the ladies. And it but, wasn't really to impress the ladies. I'll, I'll tell you that it was more just because it was there. Twilight Zone's coming back. a terrible reason to do that. But. I guess we're going Dutch on CBS All Access because we should because... Because now it's... it's well, we can watch that... Podcast lore. We can watch that Discovery show, the Picard show's coming out, Twilight Zone. Yeah, there's a lot to it. Plus, there's other CBS All Access pieces that are probably good. Oh, Twilight Zone's on there. <laughs> yeah, exactly. I think that's already on Amazon Prime, though, too. It definitely is. I saw a really good documentary, and I highly recommend it for you, if you have Amazon Prime, which you do. I do. It's like an, it's an hour that. and 15 minutes of your time, but it is so weird, but so interesting. Do you like The Price is Right? No. Oh, then you wouldn't like this documentary. Then. Never mind. <laughs> I don't care for daytime TV. It was about a guy who had memorized all of the prizes and their prices and was like on the show like 30 some odd times in the audience he got on stage once but he like would call out bids and people would like use them to get perfect bids and eventually it all culminated in this guy having the perfect bid for the showcase showdown and they thought like there was cheating Did they throw him out he's hence been banned <laughs> oh no that poor man he had but he was weird, like a savant kind of weird unhealthy obsession with the price is right speaking of tv the Walking Dead had its lowest ratings this week, a mere 1.7 million. I wish we could get 1.7 million people listen to this show because then we could monetize it. You got a couple thousand. That's I wish one. we had a few thousand more than we could. That's not 1.7 though. But that's their lowest ratings of all time. Comic book show The Walking Dead. It's The Walking Dead itself. Boring, boring show The Walking Dead. I watched it for a couple seasons. Did not like it. I stopped after like the second season. Because that was boring and on a farm. I made it a bit more than the second season, but yeah, what a boring the show. Season, the first season was interesting. This show is like Stockholm Syndrome. Like people are just sticking around because they've been around it for like ten years. They want to know what happens. Mostly, I just want Norman Reedus to quit so he can go do Boondock Saints three. Rick dies probably. He already kind of, no he because he's doing those movies now. It's like there's a series of movies he didn't quite die on it. Like he blew himself up in a bridge. I don't know. I don't follow it, so I don't we, care. We talked about this when it happened. Oh. Rick's not dead. He's doing some movies. Good for Rick. Michonne's doing some movies. She's quitting because now that she has that Black Panther status. Speaking of Black Panther status. Why not? Won three Oscars. First three Oscars for the for Marvel. For Marvel Studios. Into the Spider-Verse was the best animated film. That was no surprise, though. That that was a that was that a was gimme. great. There was no way in hell anything else was going to win best animated. Like no, but I mean, just no to, way. It was a really good night for Marvel and for comic movies. Yeah, four, good they did uh, four Oscars for Marvel related films. What was it Black Panther won costume design, production design, and it should have won those two. Like the color palette in that movie is fantastic, and it won best score. The, okay, that was the other one. Yes, I couldn't remember. <laughs> I didn't watch the Oscars because Kendrick care. Lamar did not win an Oscar for best song, although he was nominated. All right, good for him. Lady Gaga did. <laughs> have you seen that? Movie? I have a bad spray tan. 
I'm, she did. She was orange. She was more orange than Donald Trump in the so, thing. So did you watch some of that? Did you see her and Bradley Cooper sing? Yeah, I did. I watched that. Yeah, but I, I've seen. I saw the movie. Out to steal Bradley Cooper from his woman. Does he have a woman? Yes, he does. Oh. At least he, he did going to the Oscars. Well, I don't think he does anymore. No, actually, she applauded it. She was part of a standing ovation. Did you see the movie A Star Is Born? Yeah, I did. I just said that. Oh, what did you think? I haven't seen it. I've heard. I need to, like it's worth watching. I think the end is a little bit rushed. Where where it leads, it it does a good. It hits all of the. I mean, I know what happens. So it hits all the beats that it has to hit, but it doesn't linger on the beats. It's just. Did you, it, did you get glassy eyed? No, because I think it if the end of it, the last like twenty minutes felt like more of a checklist. Oh, okay. like we, we got to hit this. We got to hit this. We got to hit this. And they didn't linger on. It. It's a long movie, but they didn't linger on. Do you think that's why it moments. may not have won Best Oscar? Um, I think people like to be reminded that racism is bad. So don't be a racist. Yes. Did you see Green Book? <laughs> no, I haven't seen it I didn't yet. even know it was a movie until the other night. I, I'm more aware than that, but no, I haven't seen it yet. Spike Lee getting an Oscar, though. Uh, Spike Lee was not happy with Green Book winning. No, he wasn't. When Do the Right Thing came out, he wasn't even nominated, and Driving Miss Daisy came out. He was like, every time someone's driving somewhere, I lose. <laughs> <laughs> it's, it's fair. He even came out with the love and hate from uh, Do the Right Thing. Yep. I love uh, it. What's uh, Radio... What's his name? The character from Do the Right Thing. I can't like remember. Radio Raheem. Is Something it? Like, yeah, yeah, yeah. I think yeah. so. <laughs> but yeah, he had those, and he was pissed. He tried to leave the Oscars when Green Book won, and they wouldn't let him leave. Oh, jeez. <laughs> and I, like, there was an interview afterwards. There was people were like, "What's your reaction?" And it was like, "He's like, you British, you British." Like, yeah, yeah. He's like, "It wasn't my cup of tea." <laughs> But yeah, that's his first um, nod that he got. And there was some silence because he's like, motherfucker, don't start that clock. <laughs> don't you even, <laughs> don't even begin to. So so I'm like still waiting for, should I or should I not? With Star is Born? Yeah. Yeah, it's good. I just, the, the ending felt rushed, but yeah, it's good. I want to see it mostly because Sam Elliott is an American treasure. I understand why he didn't win. He's barely in the movie. Yeah, I don't know why he got, I guess... It was definitely a, you've done a lot of stuff and you should have an Oscar nod kind of nomination. Uh, he, he's, I mean, he's good in it, but he's barely in it. Yeah. Well, I mean, after seeing the movie and seeing that he got an Oscar nod, I was like, why? I still haven't seen he, Bohemian he's Rhapsody, good. so I can't like... I'm not going to see Bohemian Rhapsody. I got a ton of love. Four Oscars. Best actor. Yeah, but Brian Singer. So I'm out. I'm out. All right, well. I'm not going to see it. I won't give him a cent. What if I rented it and you could watch it on my dime? No, I still wouldn't want to. Oh, okay. I, it, but you like Queen. I'm going to continue to like Queen. You wouldn't want to see if like if the hype was there, if, if uh, Remy Malek was that good? Nope. Okay. I'm out. All right. Brian Singer, uh, yeah, I'm out. All right. That's right. I'm not judging one way or the other. I'm just trying to like pick your brain on it. That's all. What else is up this week? Oscars. Oh, Stan Lee was in the In Memoriam section. Good on him. Is that it for movies? That might be it for movies and TV. Comic news: Black Cat. She's getting her first ongoing series ever. Wow. That do you, that was um, Entertainment Weekly when Black Panther was going to be in Civil War. They put a meow above his head in a speech bubble. That, that's what that reminded me. Oh of. wow. Okay. That's a weird. Bit. I don't. I don't really read Entertainment Weekly. Felicia Hardy. She's a cat burglar, and she's had a bunch of sex with Spider Man. But now she's getting her own ongoing comic Good series. Good for Spider Man. Yeah. He. I mean, Mary Jane's dead. No, Gwen Stacy's dead. Oh, yeah. Gwen Stacy's dead. I mean, I He's think not. he makes it a point to only have sex with the supermodel hot women. Well. It's what he does. He's Spider-Man. <laughs> Spider-Man. Spider-Man. Having sex with hot women. You're on fire tonight. Did you write that down? You were looking at your notes when you did that. Does he have an STD? He might. He's Spider-Man. Look out. Here comes a uh, chlamydia. <laughs> The end kind of fell apart. Does he have toxic sperm? Watch how Gwen Stacy squirms. He no, ac- she's dead. He actually killed Mary Jane, oh, Mary Jane. with his semen. Yes, yeah, so that's why I said that. In an alternate universe. Yes. <laughs> Gave her cancer. Oh, that's, that's, a, that's not funny. It's ridiculous, and it happened. It's in a comic book. <laughs> yep. Spider Bite is a character that's coming into Friendly Neighborhood Spider-Man. Written by Tom Taylor, it looks like it's going to be a little guy that's a Spider-Man. Probably not going to kill you with a sperm, because he's a child. That was that was such a concern of mine. Thank you for alleviating it. <laughs> it is now. Um, speaking of concerns, Donny Cates. That's a hell of a sub- segue. I almost called it a subway. <laughs> Donny Cates, writer of Venom. He has been getting death threats over a twist in number 11. How about no? 
Yeah, I don't understand what twisted number 11. Oh, from book number I, I, 11. I mean, I'm not, I don't want to spoil it just because it's relatively oh. new. I don't think I need to spoil it to say, how about no? Yeah, why do we have to death threat people? It, it th- doesn't matter. It's a comic. I make my livelihood off of this and it doesn't matter why we want to kill each other yeah just just don't that's really all i have to say on this it doesn't matter i feel like that's common sense everything is gonna get retconned no matter what it's just none of, none of this matters it's comic book stories matter art matters everything is allowed to be important to you like feel it and love it and all that stuff but the idea of death threats is stupid shut the hell up yeah well, there's no need to kill or threaten to kill that's pretty straightforward. I don't. I, I guess I don't really. I don't have a hot take for that, Zach. I'm sorry. <laughs> yeah, don't do that. Here's a hot take, though. Okay. Walmart exclusive DC books. They were hundred page spectaculars. Are those gone the way of the dodo? Those are continuing, but continuing further. Really? Originally, it was announced that these hundred page spectaculars. Uh, speaking about are Bendis, they gonna be, are they going to be two hundred? Well, they they are going to expand beyond Walmart and go into the direct market, meaning comic book stores so to that i say suck it walmart get out of my business yeah get out of my life i hate you i mean they've some of them have. i think you're not you're gonna you're not gonna shop at the house of sam walton ever again man it didn't really anyway so it's not that big of a stretch Uh, you're more of a target guy uh not really i mean target's closer to our house yes not our house but i mean both of our homes although i mean yes (laughs) it's more this is our house thank you for allowing me to Become part of your home. Get out like, of my house. I've got a lot of car. I got a stuff in my car. I'm ready to move in. Sleep here on the couch. I like how you pick the couch when there's an extra bed. Well, that's too close <laughs> to where you sleep, and I hear you snore. This gives some. I do snore you like snore. a wildebeest. You need to get like a CPAP machine or something. <laughs> I do, but I'm not going to. Why not? Effort. It will like, vastly improve your life. I'm fine. Caffeine fixes that. Why don't you just get like a, some nasal strips so you open your nose up a little bit and maybe you don't snore as bad? It's not that. It's, it's when I have my head kind of tilted oh i think we're looking down your gut like that played a role <laughs> no look at it look at it i don't want to <laughs> it's leaking out from underneath your shirt no it's not yeah, like, unfair <laughs> that's because you're not standing up right now so it w- we've been unreasonably harsh towards each other tonight you <laughs> called me a son of a bitch i'm calling you fat i mean i am not in my best shape that i've ever been round is a shape <laughs> No, I am, boy, I miss being 24. Squiggly lines. That's when I was like working out twice a day. I was, I was thin. I you were, was fit. You were svelte. Uh, that, that time has come and gone. Yeah. Let's, you know, I'll, I'll settle for once a day now versus twice a day. Uh, what are we doing now? Sort of workout podcast. Spider-Man Deadpool. That's ending at issue 50. It's been a good run. Okay. I like it. You know, they're a little bit silly or they're a little bit, you know, it's a, it's a buddy cop thing. It's a little bit funny. This feeling, feeling inside. inside. I'm not one of those. <laughs> Can easily hide. Exactly. Did you see the trailer for that? Yeah, it looks good. I, I'm With all Taron about it. Edgerton. Yeah. Yes. I'll, I'll watch that movie, definitely. In the theaters? Ah, uh, no, definitely not. But Spider-Man Deadpool is ending at issue 50. Chris Claremont, you, do you like the X-Men? I do like the X-Men. Basically, the majority of the X-Men has been dictated by Claremont. Okay. That wasn't like the early Stan and Jack stuff. He is coming back for Marvel Comics Presents number five. He is going to be doing a story involving Nightcrawler in his Excalibur days. I just said a lot of things. You up with it? I know Excalibur. Weird movie from the (laughs) 80s. Whatever. Claremont's back, baby. Patrick Stewart's in it. Batman this one time in a series that I deeply underordered. At Bat Camp? DC crossed over with looney tunes and i didn't really order that many of them but batman elmer fudd sold and continues to sell insanely well probably because no one ordered that many of them wow um it's it's really great it's done by tom king he's the guy who's doing the current batman run the artist was um the art was done by lee weeks very famous he's from hollowell Definitely the most famous guy from Hollowell. Yes, because I think, actually, I know someone who has some of his art hanging in their classroom at school. Really? Yes. Or it's like a signed print. Okay, I, I believe that, because his art ain't cheap. No, it's like a sign, like, it's Batman art. Yeah, and he's done Batman, but there's going to be- Yeah, a, Dewey. Dewey has some signed-, signed I'm kidding, yeah. He's, I mean, he's definitely the most famous guy from Hollowell. He's a big-time artist. But there's going to be a follow-up story, by the way, the store's in Hollowell. In Batman number 67, there will be a follow-up story to Batman Elmer Fudd that Tom King and Lee Weeks did. They're reunited. Did they catch that wascally wabbit? I uh, mean... Th- there is... Yeah, Bugs is in there, but as... Batman I, is the world's greatest detective. 
Bugs is in there as like a mob informant. He's he's a human in it, but it's it's a really great story. And you wish you had more of it. Yeah. How was I supposed to know? You're supposed to be good at the speculation market. No one predicted it, and that's part of why it sells for so. Like it actually sells for decent money, but no one knew. No one knew that like this. I could have told you that people love the Looney Tunes. That's why it's Space but Jam. But the rest of them. Oh, Space speaking Jam, of Space Jam, Space, Space Jam, Jam Two was be, announced. Yes. Yeah, it's with, been announced for a couple of weeks. They just released a poster. Well, yeah, with LeBron. What's weird is like the second billing in it is Lola Bunny. Yeah, the sexiest rabbit around. That's Everybody weird. loved Lola. Will Bill Murray be back? Probably. Will he? Will Wayne Knights I'm, be back? I'm hoping. I'm well, hoping and praying that we get Kevin Garnett in it. Why? Why Garnett? Why not? Is, uh, he's, is, he's is he going to be one? Is he going to be one of the monsters? That'd be great. No, because you got. I mean, we don't have that letter, but maybe we should have the letter. Who will be the the five current monsters? Giannis, uh, LeBron's already out. So who? Uh, would be? I don't think Giannis will be. No, maybe. Of course, I mean Giannis, we, Kyrie, Ka- uh, yeah, probably. Uh, Giannis, Kyrie, Kawhi. I think. Well, no, I think you get Dwayne Wade in there. He's retiring. They're not going to do uh, him. This Jeremy is Lin. Season. No, he's he's too out. I mean, he he peaked in like 2012. He's Harden. Harden, yeah, Harden will definitely be that beard on a monster. <laughs> yeah, definitely Harden. We need the Muggsy Bogues of today. Yeah, but what's the what, who's the short one? Rondo. Sure, why not Rondo? <laughs> but here's my question in all of this. What's the storyline? Like at least for like Michael Michael Jordan, it was it was like NBA propaganda to hype his return to the NBA. That's what it was. And this is LeBron being I told you about that theory about the Space Jam theory, right? I don't know. Well, that Michael Jordan was he didn't actively choose to play baseball, but because he was such a heavy gambler, uh, the league was worried about, you know, worried about how bad he was gambling and the amount he was gambling for and that he was gambling on basketball games allegedly. So they're like why don't you go play baseball for a year and let this blow over and then come back? Interesting. I've never heard of that. And so, like, as part of his comeback, oh, we're going to also do this movie Space Jam, which is going to hype your return to well, the Well, that NBA. was just out of the commercials. The commercials were so successful. And, I mean, I was the right age for Space Jam. I love Space Jam when it came out. But you also then, in turn, who did you watch? I mean, I was... The Bulls. Mostly because the Bulls I, were all I, around I, TV. I, was, I mean, back in the day, you could only watch the nationally televised games. Which was the Bulls. Anyone, I mean, it was all the big games, but yeah, the Bulls were definitely there. Well, you know who wrote the the NBA on NBC theme? I oh boy, who did? I used to know this. John Tesh. There we go. It's called Round Ball Rock. I mean, when Space Jam came out, I read way too much into it, and I was trying to match player moves to the monsters. No, <laughs> it was no, just, nope, <laughs> no. I still tried. Like, Sean, Sean Kemp could not reach from half court and score. I'm like, is the purple one moving like Ewing because he's the Ewing one? No. <laughs> Does he have a terrible free throw? <laughs> yes. The 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 monsters box score from the free throw line. No, you want to talk about biggest choke jobs in sports history? The monsters. <laughs> I thought it would be Shaq's three throws. No, that was like over the course. Three point percentages. That was the course of like a career. Like three this was like the single. Years. It was the single biggest game choke in the history of basketball. <laughs> Did you know that Michael Jordan can stretch thirty feet? Of course he can. Of course, his airness. And thank God Bill Murray was there with Wayne Knight. Yes. <laughs> da, 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 da. Yeah, Wayne Knight took a real hard screen and cut flagrant two. Didn't he fart? Did he fart? Am no. I remembering that right? No, they pumped him back up with air, and then he kind of flew away like a balloon after he got landed on by a monster. Usagi Ujimbo is moving from Dark Horse to IDW. Orig- it was, I think, independently published back in the 80s. Then it went to Mirage Comics. Then it's been at Dark Horse for a while. Now it's going to IDW with Stan Sakai. He's the guy who did it originally. He's still doing it. You might know um, Usagi Ujimbo from Ninja Turtles cartoons and toys. He's the rabbit. Oh, okay. Yes. Now I know who you're talking about. <laughs> Yeah, he's going to, I mean, it's still the same guy who's been doing it all this time, which is insane. Like, most people don't do that. I, I don't know. I mean, good on him. I don't have much to say about the Ninja Turtles rabbit. That's how I know him. The rabbit from Ninja Turtles. Yeah, so it's going to IDW. There's going to be a new series. Pick it up. Spider-Ham from Spider-Verse and also comics. He's going to be in the upcoming Spider-Man annual. Also, if you buy the Spider-Verse Blu-ray, they have a Spider-Ham animated cartoon on there as an extra feature. Spider-Ham is back. Spider Ham, Spider Ham. I don't remember any of the other characters from that like weird animal universe, aside from Mister Fantastic. Weird, Mister Fantastic, but he was a fox. 
Yes, but not, the but fantastic, not, but not the fantastic George. Mr. Fox. Oh, that not. was George Clooney. <laughs> yes, it was. By the way, speaking of not fantastic, the Celtics are down 20 in the second quarter. What? I'm not even... Oh, you sons of bitches. Oh, you're lumping me in with the Celtics now. Well, they just lost to Chicago. They're not good, Zach. They're underperforming. <laughs> That's deeply, deeply underperforming. That's a, you're deeply understating the status of this basketball team. They're not good. What the hell else? Okay, I'm out of notes. That's the end of the news. That was a long news segment. Oh, okay. From there, we're moving on to Jared's sports reports. He's running down the middle by the 50. He's at the 30. Bear tested. The guy is drunk, but there he goes. Oh, and they tackle him at the 40-yard line. It's time for another Jared's sports report. What do you got? Ever hear of a little place called Orchids of Asia Day Spa in Jupiter, Florida? Uh- Boy, yeah, that's a dark story. Yeah, it's not a good look for the owner of the New England Patriots, Robert Kraft, who uh, the police report was just released. Uh, He's been charged with allegedly soliciting sexual acts. Yeah, um, I wasn't even going to bring this up because it's darker than I generally like to take the show. Like, if it was... But it's it's sports news. It's sports reports. If it was prostitutes, I'd be like, yeah, that's fine. But the fact that it is... Part of a um, human sex trafficking ring. Yeah, it's the sex trafficking that, that makes it dark. Yes. If it well, if it was consenting people, fine. So but the lot. fact that it's sex trafficking, oh, that's not good. So here's it's real bad. The, here's the deal with this. Uh, here's my stand on it. First of all, if he knew or was aware that there was sex trafficking going on, as much as the Patriots, as much as I like what Robert Kraft has done for the franchise, he needs to go. Period. Yeah, I mean. End of discussion. <sighs> If it comes out that he was just a horny old dude who decided that of all the places he could get a rub and tug, this was it, and he was oblivious and did not know about the sexual, the human sex trafficking, then... Like, his wife's been dead for seven years. Okay, so... If it was prostitution... Here's, here's Here's the next piece about that. This whole indignity people have about, oh, his wife's been dead for seven years. Then being thinking about, like, yeah, she passed away, but now, like, why aren't you upset about his... 35, 40 year old white uh, girlfriend or 40 year old girlfriend, however old she is. I mean, he's 70 in his 70s. So he's got a young fox of a girl lady friend. All right. So, I wouldn't care if it was prostitution. That's the difference. Sex traffic and prostitution I'm are not, two so, different things. Well, hear me out. I'm not condoning sex trafficking. I'm glad that you're not condoning that. Yeah, I think you're misinterpreting. What a hard stance you took. You're misinterpreting what I'm you're misinterpreting what I'm saying. You're not listening to what I'm saying. You're hearing me, but you're not listening. <laughs> I'm not your wife. You act like it. <laughs> if it comes out that he knew what was going on or was somehow funding it in another way, then absolutely horrific. Terrible. This whole situation is terrible. But if he was just getting a rub and tug. Which? How did he a find out about this place, this this establishment? And B going there twice. So in the affidavit, he went there twice that they know of. That they know of. So that's another piece. But here's the other thing that's so bizarre about it. He was there the morning of the AFC title game. The AFC title game stressful was in Kent. You're telling me not stressful enough that I went to the Orchids of Asia Day Spa. But he went from Jupiter, Florida to Kansas City, Missouri. And he was there at the Orchids of Day Spa, uh, Orchids of Asia Day Spa, at like 11 or something in the morning. The uh, police report is the Boy, uh, that, charging documents are on the internet. How's the business that they're that graphic. doing? Are they, are they, uh, do they have an uptick in business or are they out? I think they actually are shut down right now. <laughs> the whole thing is weird. They faked a bomb scare in that one shop to install cameras. So the police like went in as a sting operation and installed cameras because they had probable cause. I know, I know they got video, but I didn't. No, the 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 general consensus is that video might be released sometime next week. Oh, that's embarrassing. <laughs> you need to at some point. Uh, no, okay, you don't. I need don't need to. to look up this video. No, no not the I video, don't. but read the police report. I I saw I saw some of the prelim stuff, but I haven't really looked into it since like the day it happened. So it, it doesn't describe sexual intercourse, but there were other pleasantries exchanged. So ultimately, <laughs> pleasantries, <laughs> other other activities. So here's here's some things for me on, uh, in, in regards to this. Number one, Patriots fans who are saying, "Oh, we need to rally around Kraft or free Kraft," shut the hell up. Shut the hell up. Scumbag's a scumbag. Doesn't matter Here's, what sports association they're with. The, the people are like, this is their rallying cry for a seventh title. No, 
No, it's not. And if you make it your rallying cry, you are what's wrong with Patriots fans. To say that the Patriots need motivation because Robert Kraft went and got a rub, hug, and tug at some... Stop saying rub and tug. You've said it so many times. Because he went and got a happy ending <laughs> at the Orchids of Asia Day Spa at, in a strip mall in Jupiter, Florida. And that's their motivation for winning a seventh title. You are a frigging idiot. You were an absolute moron. I can't. I've I've seen some of those takes. Like, oh, they're out to get Robert Kraft. No, he made a stupid ass decision. He's worth billions of dollars, and he could have gone anywhere else in the world to get that provided to him. But he went there like an idiot. It was a stupid, stupid thing that he did. He could have gotten regular prostitution with consenting people. Yeah, he could have gone to Vegas, although it'd be a longer flight from Vegas to (laughs) Kansas City. Not the point. I agreed, but this whole thought of oh they're conjuring up some scandal because the patriots won a super bowl and that no robert Kraft broke the law and if you want to have a wider discussion about the sex industry then great let this be the impotence for that and let it be the impotence to educate yourself about how sex trafficking is horrible and it's a it's a real problem in this country and it's been brought to light so there's that Celtics aren't doing great. The Celtics suck ass. <laughs> they could be doing better. They had a out of the All Star break. They've just been losing. They have not been good. No, uh, I feel like there was something else that was a more cheerful and upbeat sports story there, that I had. Was there a Bruins story? I don't know. I don't uh, know not why. really. They're just they're brewing. <laughs> Things are brewing for the Bruins. But ultimately, with this whole Patriots thing, like the hot takes of oh they should lose draft picks or this or that is no. No, what's, no. What's that have to do with the, the owner? Nothing. See, exactly. Well, he it's his franchise, and he can be held to he owners are held to a higher standard. Listen, Jim Irsay was suspended. Just get him out of there. Jim Irsay, who was the who's the owner of the Colts, was suspended like four or six games for intoxicated driving and pill abuse. So, I mean, there's precedent there for him to get suspended, and he might probably get suspended and and not be there for the opening game. But ultimately, he made a very poor choice. And we'll have to wait for kind of everything to come out in to light as to what was happening, what he knew or didn't know. I mean, best case scenario for him is there's a video of him on the internet paying a prostitute. A correction. There's a video of him on the internet paying a woman who is being sex trafficked into this country, taking care of his Super Bowl needs. Uh, so but best like, ca- best case scenario is he's kind gonna, of a creep. Worst case scenario is knowledgeably involved with sex trafficking. Yeah, in which case that's prison. Yeah, that should be prison, and he'll lose his franchise. And but I mean, the the bigger p- thing for me in all of this is um, be smart, be smarter, fellow Patriots fans. Don't be don't be a fanatic. The guy with his personal business is his personal business. The fact that it ended up being with a sex trafficking organization ring not good <laughs> no and staying in football <laughs> hard take the uh state of massachusetts has introduced legislation to ban people ban kids that are seventh grade or younger for playing full contact tackle football yeah i'm on board with it i'm on board actually i'd like to see it be seventh grade if you're seventh grade or higher you can play full contact and i'm a football coach i don't like that it's necessarily come down to uh, having to be something that maybe legislated i'd like to see the game better police itself through like the pop warner and youth levels but the science shows that young kids can't be having head contact like that. I'm all for it. I mean, hockey has it. You can't check until you're 13 or 14 years old in hockey. So, I mean, there there are – like hockey regulates itself well. Soccer, Little League, there's pitch limits and pitch counts. In Little League and Legion Baseball and in high school baseball, there are pitch counts. So why can't there be – things in place to help protect developing young brains i'm just wishing that football itself would police itself through that the science unequivocally shows that in youth level football players their heads are bigger and they weigh more comparatively to the rest of the body as they get older and that the impact that they have is equivalent to that of a collegiate or nfl player in comparison to body size that's a lot of brain potential brain injury now listen I'm not saying football is evil. I love football. I think it's the greatest <laughs> game on the planet. And I evil. I think that it, you should play it. Yeah, play football. Learn a lot from I it. I mean, basketball you don't, is the best sport out there. Okay, listen. Football and basketball hold equal space in my heart. <laughs> okay. Like, you're just placating me. You don't actually believe that. No, they hold equal space in my heart. They really do. But I feel, I feel a passion for football and how it transformed me as a young man when I played. Learned a lot about myself playing football. And smoking those cigarettes. I wasn't smoking cigarettes in high school. <laughs> oh. I was of age. Well, aren't you hoity-toity? 
Listen, when I smoked my camels, I smoked them appropriately. <laughs> cool. That's your take? No. Cool. Joe Cool. Yeah, camel. You're right. You're right on. <laughs> Atta boy. You know what's up. Uh, what a what a mascot that was. All right. We He's cool. no Marlboro man, but. <laughs> we moving on. Joe Cool. He looks like a penis. Looks like a camel. Please, I'm gonna pull up a picture of Joe Cool. And you... I know what a camel looks like. This is—he's a different kind of camel. He's one with the pack in his sleeve. That's just one iteration in of his Joe white cool. tea. Yeah, I'm not also advocating for the smoking of cigarettes. Uh, oh, Joe—it's not Joe Cool. It's Joe Camel. Joe Camel. Yes. Joe, Joe, cool. Joe Cool. Joe Cool was Snoopy. Oops, got those confused. You know how Snoopy always smoked those cigarettes. You don't. Hey, I th- bet there's a comic where Snoopy smoked. It was in the 50s. You know who else smoked? The Flintstones. I was going to say, most people? I don't, yeah, I don't see, look at his nose looks like a penis. You got issues, Ben. <laughs> We're moving on from there to Jared's reading corner. It's Captain Marvel time, baby. Stop looking at that camel. It's Jared's reading corner. All right, Captain Marvel's out like in two weeks. Yep. Or eight days or something. I don't even know anymore. Uh, a week from this weekend. But it's here. It's time. Uh, this... Captain Marvel movie is supposedly taking a lot of reference from the w- run we're talking about today that was written by Kelly Sue Madonic. It's a Jared's reading corner in a me reading corner. I thought you were doing more introduction. <laughs> no, you, uh, you you really slouched back three feet away from the well, microphone. Well, no, because you started like you were really getting. I was introing it, and then you were like, "I'm done. I'm out." You were getting like way more um, hyped An- up, animated. Like- uh, I thought you were like, it was written by, and then you said it, and then you just stopped. You didn't say anything else about it. <laughs> no, I mean, this run is supposedly a big influence on this movie. We're only reading uh, from the first arc. This went on for a number of them. I'm not quite sure off the top of my head. I should have looked it up. Since when did she live in the Statue of Liberty? I don't know. From here. When this run started. Oh. Are we doing an in-depth full spoiler run, or are we just doing Yeah, why a- not? Spoil spoil away. She's making out with Rhodey. Yeah, she's making out with Rhodey outside of a barn, and then she's like, I want to go to space. And he's <laughs> like, well, I'm not going to hold you down. And he's she's like, like, will you feed my cat? And he goes, absolutely not. <laughs> By the way, that cat is an alien, Yeah, which Rocket Raccoon <laughs> identifies yes. immediately. He's like, evil alien. She's like, no, it's not. He's like, yes, it is. <laughs> uh, Does tur- it lay eggs? <laughs> turns out um, it, it's 100% an alien. Which I think is going to show up in the movie. In the comics, the Chewy cat is Chewy, named after Chewbacca. In the movie, it's Goose for uh, Top Gun, Top a movie Gun. which you Thanks. have not seen. I have not seen Top Gun. You're right. Which they're making a second Top Gun. <laughs> I'm aware of that. Supposedly, the cat is interesting in the movie. Also, Ben Mendelsohn is getting a lot of praise for... I'm going to make you watch both Top Gun movies. ...being evil in another movie, as he is wont to do, whether it's rogue one or ready player one or captain marvel one I say, he's in a lot of one movies <laughs> apparently i didn't even because they do a captain marvel two this by default becomes captain marvel one yeah so base synopsis is um there is a uh unidentified object hurling towards new york and iron man and carol danvers also known as captain marvel go out to stop it and it ends up being actually an alien from a different planet a what an alien a what <laughs> A not from around here thing. Oh, we should have built a wall to stop it. I bet that would have got it. Anyhow, um, space wall, space force. That's why we have the space force. <laughs> These things wouldn't happen. You're absolutely right. So she's like, I will bring you back to your home planet. And on the way, she's encountered by the Guardians of the Galaxy and Space Cat. But, I mean, that just that was big around this time. Like Guardians was just coming out as a movie, so the Guardians of the Galaxy were everywhere. Yes. Gamora wants to kill Kai. What what the hell is the alien's name? Kip? Kit? <laughs> it's, it's Kit. Kit? Is it Kit? Is it Mr. Feeney is a car? This is not Knight Rider. <laughs> uh, Tick. Tick is its name. So Tick the childlike alien. They get to the planet Torfa after all kinds of strange things happen. I appreciate you attempting to pronounce these things. You, is it not Torfa? I don't know. I don't remember. It's I in read Settler City ago. in Torfa a week and a half later. Anyway, this green girl is surrounded by friends and robots. A robot named B, Bebop, BB Bebop, Bebop, BB King. Also, probably because around the time BB 8 was hot. Mm-bop. No, this is before that. Mm-bop, bop, oh. mm-bop. So, mm-bop, anyway, bop, the people of the planet of Torfa mm-bop, are all sick, or there is a sickness on the planet, and they're thinking of having a mass exodus from the planet. And they're like, Oh, are you here to help us? And she's like, Yes. And really, she's like, Why did I say that? So, she discovers that the planet is actually rich with vibranium. 
A what? Vibranium. I thought they only had that in Wakanda. Well, it was a meteorite, so it could have come from Torfa <laughs> or Visor 2, which is where the Empire is, or some sort of galactic type empire. Yeah, they have, um, if you're only used to the movie version of Guardians of the Galaxy, there is a comic version of Star-Lord's Dead that's different. It's Jason of Spartax. Yes. Spartax. Yes. Sparta, Sparta, Spartax. I don't know. It's never been said out loud. I'm <laughs> taking a stab in the dark here. He's not great. Bit of an unfriendly fellow. Not a great dad. No, he's not a great dad. <laughs> so there's a large fight which ensues, and Captain Marvel discovers that there is vibranium on Darmok and Jalad at Tanangra. <laughs> So for me, what but this... anyway, they're making people sick so they can leave the planet so they can have all the vibranium. It's pretty much the story. And Captain Marvel saves the day by saying, no, no, I will destroy the vibranium, 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 the mines. <laughs> <laughs> that was a porky pig uh, moment. Yes. The, 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 well, the, I hear that the rock mines. I hear I hear Looney Tunes are in. <laughs> they're worth lots of money. Just that one. Oh, uh, for me, the difference solid. here is I mean, Captain Marvel for, or Carol Danvers for a long time was Miss Marvel for the majority of her comics career. And when she switched over to Captain Marvel, this is uh, not only a title change, which had happened a little bit before this run started, but also kind of a character change for them. I mean, she had her own book in the 70s for a while, which I've never read, so I really can't speak to it. But her uh, most prominent role for a lot of time was on the Avengers as kind of the tough chick. And that's about as deep as the character got. But when she took over as Captain Marvel, which had been the title of Marvel, who's a Kree warrior, uh, he'd been dead for a long time of cancer, the character became more than just, I'm the tough chick. It became, started becoming actually, you know, layered. And I'm an Avenger, had, and yeah. I'm a hero. and Yeah, more than just, I'm the tough lady who fights things in a um, swimsuit. She has a little, like sash thing on now so it's not like the she, she always had a sash but he, she basically wore a one piece swimsuit and punched things in space that's what she did for a while with her photon fists yeah so i mean this is kind of the run that starts actually like making her a character again because for a while she was just a supporting character that didn't do a hell of a lot and i i liked her as miss marvel but uh, I mean, seeing kind of what happened, yeah, it's a character that needed an update. No, I, she does this happen <laughs> after the other one? This came out before the one we did last week. Okay. I don't think this works quite as well as an intro, even though this is kind of the reboot of a character, because there are a couple of things, like, you're like, who the hell is Jason of Spartax? And there's a couple of yeah, other things. because you that... start to get to, like, in some of the galactic stuff, and I'm like, oh, I know the Guardians of the Galaxy. <laughs> yeah, I saw a movie. Yeah, and that's about all I know. It. Where's Galactus? Overall, it's still... Where's Thanos? It's a pretty good jumping on point, but I think Life of Captain Marvel works a bit better as one if you were trying to... Learn uh, and... Yeah. Ingratiate yourself into the Captain Marvel Ooh, lore. Good word. Overall, it's a pretty good run. It's one of the ones that people kind of point to is like, this is Captain Marvel. And the movie's doing it too. And there's definitely a scene of her flying about through space, blasting things that is uh, 100% something we've seen in the trailers. Oh yeah, no. Like was... That scene of her that looks kind of rubbery, like blasting things in space. That yeah. is one hundred percent out of this book. No, this was fun. I enjoyed it. It wasn't like it was confusing because I didn't know some of the things, like Jason and so on and whatnot. But it's not. It's not bad. It's yeah. good. I would recommend it. It's. I think Life of Captain Marvel. If you've never read Captain Marvel, is a good jumping on point. Yeah, and this is definitely the one that I would recommend secondarily after that. Buy it at Just Note Comics. It'd be four dollars off. It's... <laughs> oh yeah do we mention do we no we didn't yet that? big uh, sale oh uh, yeah there, there's a big sale happening right now because my boiler decided to be expensive do you want to go through the sale or do you want to go through editors i don't even through... remember what they are it's a big sale it's, it's a tiered sale the more you spend the more you save that's what we like to hear it's true and it's um <laughs> like a week and a half yeah plus um if unless it's something you've already pre-ordered an established price new run comics are also at that tiered price i'm, I'm taking it like you you spend, you save. Let's pay this massive bill together. You want to you want to save a little, spend a little. All right. Will that do it for Jared's reading corner? That's it for Jared's All reading right. corner. We're moving on. What the hell is the question of the week? All right. Moving on to letters to the editors. A lot of questions, number one. Damn few answers. Here's another one of your letters to the editors. Make it so. With the consensus that most people will return in Endgame that died... Who will actually stay dead after this movie? 
Tony. That's kind of my thought too. <laughs> but he's not. But he's not dead at the beginning of the movie. So like people that die at the end of the movie or stay dead. I think everyone comes back, but I think I'm gonna go on a limb and say I think Drax might die. You know why I say that? Because uh, Batista is pissy. Because guess who was on Monday Night Raw last night for WWE wrestling? Batista. He was. Was he like I'm dead? No, he actually. Um, I was. Re- I read an article about it today because I saw Batista at WWE. I'm like, hmm. I will click on this. Perhaps it contains show information. No, allegedly last night on the WWE Monday Night Raw program. It was they were celebrating Ric Flair's seventieth birthday, so he beat him up. <laughs> he beat up a seventy year old man. Do you see um Hemsworth is gonna star as Hulk Hogan in a movie? In a bio. I did see that, yeah. I bet Hulk Hogan is like, That's the best news ever. Well, good for me. I'll actually <laughs> look fit again. <laughs> I'm not gonna take a call from my son during a sex tape. So here's the deal though with that. Like if you're doing a Hulk Hogan biopic, you have to include Andre the Giant. So who is going to be Andre the Giant? Aaron Baines. Who's going to be Macho Man Randy Savage? Who's going to be Jimmy Superfly Snuka? Who's going to be... Yeah, there was a lot of Look, people. I, I gave you Andre the Giant. What more do you want? Did you make that up or is that real? I don't know. Give it to Aaron Baines. Put a wig on him. Wow. Oh, did you see... That there's make a, him not Australian. Did you see there's a new... Um, oh, no, see, that's different. It's Andre the Giant wasn't like tall. Make like, Josh was. Gad buff, I guess. Uh, good luck. Did you see that there's a new Martin Scorsese movie coming out with Al Pacino, Robert De Niro, and Joe Pesci? Like, Joe Pesci in a movie for the first time in forever. Like, the guys that were in Casino and Goodfellas. Well, Al Pacino was in Casino. I know. Or who, Goodfellas. I know who these people are. Yes. No, I haven't seen that there's a movie coming out. What if it's the first time all three of them been in the same movie? Uh, sure. Well, no, because Pacino wasn't in Goodfellas. De Niro was <laughs> in. Goodfellas, that, you went main on that one. De Niro was in Godfather 2, but never the same time as Pacino was. I mean, not the same time. Not in the same scene. No, but they were in the same movie. They were in the same movie, yeah. Pacino was the only one of those three that was in Scarface. De Niro and Pacino weren't in the Home Alone movies. <laughs> no, they but weren't. But Joe Pesci was. Thank God you identified De Niro the and movie. Pacino were in Heat, but no... Okay, great. Whatever. Neither the, my cousin Vinny. The question was, who's dying? I said Iron Man. You said Iron Man. Anyone else going to die or is he going to... The guy? I think Captain America dies too. Who? Uh, the Russos have said some stuff that make me think that he's not. I, otherwise, I might have said that. Well, maybe everything just gets retconned and reset. I think Downey Jr. is out. I think he's just going to be too expensive at this point. I think he's made his money. I think he's getting a bit older. And I think, yeah, it's probably... Did we talk about how this was, like, potentially based on all good things? Oh, yeah, yeah, we did. Yeah, okay. Uh, I mean, um, for that kind of, like, same vein, I mean, you could always say, like... It's only a couple months away, by the way. Yeah, April. If everyone with age, Cheadle might be done, or Ruffalo. I mean, those guys are... They're not, like, old, old, but they're getting older. But they also have the advantage of, you know, that mask comes down on War Machine, and you don't got to worry about Cheadle doing anything. That's true. And Ruffalo just has to go, like... Well, the Hulk's out. I'm done. Yep. So we'll see. I don't know. My my money would be on Iron Man. That's my guess. All right. Good guess. He started it, so he should finish it. Time to wrap it up? Yeah. All right. Uh, so if you want to help support the show, go to patreon.com slash editors note comics for $1 a month to get this podcast a day early plus Patreon exclusive podcast when Zach gets off his lazy ass and does them. Well, no, there's two out this week. Oh, there, see? He got off his lazy ass and did them. There's one that's, I mean... I mean, by the time this comes out, the other two will be out, so it doesn't matter. We did, because um, I get P- sometimes I get PDFs early. I was like, you know, if I get my shipment on time, then they'll both be out at the same time. But then I had the whole boiler thing, so that really set me back a day. Oh, is that what you were recording before I got here? Yeah. Oh, cool. Yeah, it was. Nice. I, I, I've recorded two podcasts today. Good for you. My, also, my throat is dry. Oh, drink your tea. I'm out of tea. The That's tea's a, gone. Oh, no, there is no tea. Plus, you can visit the store at 210 Water Street in Hollowell where there's Zach's emergency boiler sale going on. $5 off any $30 purchase, $10 off $40 purchases, $20 off $60, $30 off $80, and $40 off $100 purchases. And that sale goes through March 9th. So, all next week and a little beyond that, too. Yeah, that the sale was a surprise to me. <laughs> And to everyone else. Make Zach's pain your gain at the emergency boiler thon sale. Uh profit off of my misfortune. <laughs>
I've been doing that for many years now. Uh, yeah, that, 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 was a, that was a surprise. Plus, you can visit the store on a variety of internet platforms, most specifically, editorsnotecomics.com. You can also find Zach on the Facebooks, the Twitters, and Instagrams, where you can see Kirby. I have the most fun on Twitter. You uh, and, and you're also on Twitter. At Junior Rich. That's a thing. We'll be back next week to prep more Captain Marvel, except this time, it won't be about her. It'll be about the Kree Skrull War. Oh, Skrulls? I gotta, I, I gotta get that off to you. I haven't read it Skrills. yet. Skrills. Skrillex. No, no, stop saying Skrills. Skrillex. <laughs> All right, we'll be back. He is Vigo. <laughs> oh, wow. Weird long callback. <laughs> Bye.